Again, uh, my name is Scott Bain, and this presentation is uh, basically centered around a topic that I recently wrote a book on. It came out in, in March. Um, and of course, the uh, book's a long thing, so uh, what we're going to be able to do in the next hour to hour and a half is to demonstrate the overall thesis of the book. And to do that, <coughs> excuse me, I want to cover um, a series of topics to enough depth to basically reach the point where we can do that demonstration. But before we do that, what I want to do is basically pose a couple of rhetorical questions. These are just things I want you to, to think about. Uh, because this thought process will help to kind of guide the reason that I'm picking and choosing the things that I am throughout the presentation. And <clears throat> the first question is basically, you know, what is design? Uh, what do we mean when we use the word design? And there are actually a lot of different definitions to this. Uh, one that's come up recently because of the focus on lean uh, manufacturing techniques being, uh, being incorporated into software development is this notion that uh, it's a, a desire or an effort to mitigate risk. And when we think about risk, <clears throat> we can actually categorize that in many, many different ways. But one way you can think of it is uh, the likelihood of risk and the seriousness or the consequence of risk. We have things that are very likely to happen but which don't have very strong consequences. We have things which are very, very dire when they happen, but they're not very likely. <clears throat> Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, you know, what is worth mitigating in our design, what do we want to deal with in our design, and what things are outside the envelope of what is worth it. Another way to think of design is to think of it as an opportunity to find those areas of waste which can be reduced or eliminated, eliminating waste being another lean principle. Sometimes when we think about the software that we're going to develop, we can see in it opportunities right from the very beginning to make choices that are going to eliminate areas of waste. And some people would say that's what design is. Or some people would say it's a way of documenting the thought process, um, you know, what your intentions are when you begin a project, or what you think is true or real or right about the problem domain that you're automating. Or some people would say that design is, in fact, the thought process itself. Um, <clears throat> I like to say that, that people who are engaged in software development are always doing both a practical and an intellectual thing. The practical thing is they're producing software, the intellectual thing is, well, essentially we're paid to be smart, make smart decisions. And a lot of people would say that that thought process part, the intellectual part, uh, is what design is. I think these are all true to some degree. Um, but another thing that we can say is that design is not just something that exists at a single level. Um, if you are engaged in architectural decisions, such as is this application going to be client server, is it going to be a web service, is it going to be in tier, what are the tiers, and that kind of decision making I think is a very high level of design, which most people would use the word architecture for. Of course, there is design that we call design, design in quotes, uh, which is most people would say something like, what are your objects, what are your object relationships, uh, what are the interfaces in your design, um, you know, how are things constructed, when are they constructed, and so forth. Uh, that's design in quotes, or what people would say the design patterns are actually about. But I'd also like to point out that although most people wouldn't say that code is design, I think it actually is because if you think about it, uh, the actual software, the stuff that gets run on the machine, the executable, is not something typically that we create uh, anymore. I mean, there was a time in the past when people often worked directly in machine code, but that's pretty rare today. I would say that most people write something which will be translated into the software uh, by the compiler, and actually the compiler makes the software. What you're doing if you're working in any even, you know, reasonably high-level language is, I think, just a low level of design. The code itself is really just a low level of design. It's a design or plan that the compiler will follow. Another interesting and, again, rhetorical question uh, besides, you know, what is design is when do we do it? Uh, and if you ask that question, there are a lot of seemingly natural answers. For instance, a lot of people would say, well, you do it after you've completed an analysis of the problem domain. I mean, you can't design something uh, if you don't understand it, right? Uh, and similarly, they would say, well, <coughs> before you're actually going to go, <coughs> excuse me, um, let's talk to my throat. <coughs> before you're going to go and actually implement the code, then you should have a well-understood design in hand because otherwise you're just coding in the blind. And although these two things sound reasonable, there's an implication. 
And the implication, of course, is that we're going to be conducting software development in these dis discrete phases, analysis first, then design. And then when design is complete, we will do implementation. And when implementation is complete, we will do testing. And when testing is complete, we will do release. Of course, this is the big joke in software development, that after we test, we release. That assumes that there's nothing you know, that we find in testing that needs to be fixed. So actually, testing loops back to implementation, and sometimes even to design, and sometimes even to analysis, because we find in testing that we got something wrong. And that's really the problem here. Uh, if we're not testing anything until after it is complete, then is there any test of the rightness of our design? And given that we know that we aren't testing our design, then our concern is, well, <clears throat> what if it's the wrong design? What if somehow we've just got off in the wrong thought process, and we don't really determine that until later in the, in the project? Because of that, because people have that overarching concern, of course, the tendency is to overdo it. And overdesign is not a good thing. Overdesign puts complexity in your way. Uh, in a sense, overdesign is just as bad as underdesign or insufficient design but for different reasons. If you don't design enough, then you end up with chaos. And if you design too much, you end up with excessive complexity, which really ends up just being another chaos. And, uh, and we also note that, that putting design elements in is much easier than removing them. Uh, it's a little bit like, <clears throat> like when people pass laws. Uh, passing a law is much easier than repealing it. So once something gets into the system, it tends to stay there. And it will be there burdening all future development, all future testing, pretty much forever. So the real question is, what's the right amount of design? How much design is enough design? When have we gone too far? When have we not gone far enough? And this can be very difficult to determine. It's kind of a, uh, kind of a, of a soft and fuzzy issue for a lot of people. Well, I think it's important that it not be soft and fuzzy. I think it's important that we make this as concrete as we can. And uh, that's why I wanted to ask these two questions, was to set up this problem uh, in your mind uh, as we approach the agenda for the actual talk here. So here it is. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the natural flow of software development. I kind of alluded to this earlier when I talked about this idea of effectiveness without uh, excessive suffering. Um, I think there's a reason why software development is sometimes, well, just a little bit too hard. Uh, I think part of it has to do with our overall view of what it is, and I'd like to address that first. Secondly, I, I'm going to look at both the traditional view and the, or more, what I think is the more realistic view. Uh, but then secondly, what I want to do is to peel that apart and say, OK, if we agree that there is a more realistic way to look at what software development is, uh, then what are the fundamentals underneath that? What qualities drive that? What are the principles that can help us make decisions? And what are the practices that we should always follow, given the nature of software development? On top of that, there are also more complex things, which I'm going to call disciplines. These are the things that I think developers need a reasonable amount of training in. They are the things which, at least in my opinion, pretty much every developer should know about. And uh, I'm going to list three here. Uh, testing, and by this I mean particularly sustainable unit testing or test driven development, uh, refactoring, and design patterns. And then what I want to do is take these qualities, principles, and practices, this overall view, these disciplines, all of which, again, we're going to cover very lightly because it's a lot of material uh, for a relatively short period of time, but just enough, basically, so that I can show how they synergize into this notion of an emergent or emerging design. I also want to point out that <clears throat> what I'm going to talk about here is both emergent design in terms of how you determine your, your design uh, initially, which is an emergent process, uh, and also how the design will change over time, which is an emergent process. And uh, those are different problems, but the good news is that the principles, qualities, practices, and so forth behind them are exactly the same. And then when we're done, I'll give you just a couple of hints about things you can do for the future. But the big one, of course, is what Michael has already told you, which is that this is recorded and it's part of a library of recorded uh, webinars. Uh, which are there for you to use and, you know, basically.